One court says yes to prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for the blessing of this day, and I just thank you for the amazing group of people that you've surrounded me with while another says no to worship. Your religious freedom is at stake. This is the Citizen Link Report. Hi, I'm Stuart Shepard along with Bruce Houseconnect, our judicial analyst. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Stuart. We have two cases, two very different outcomes. First, we want to talk about a, a prayer by a valedictorian at a Texas graduation just held this past weekend. What's that all about? All right. Well, the high school originally scheduled its graduation ceremony to include an invocation and a benediction. To which, be, which would be a problem. That would be a problem under the current Supreme Court law on the First Amendment. Yeah. And uh, a, a lawsuit was brought by the parents of a student at the school, and a district judge, a federal district judge, issued an injunction, not only prohibiting the invocation and the benediction, but prohibiting all prayer, any mention of prayer. By anybody. By anybody. Now, that was way overbroad and affected this valedictorian who was going to pray during her valedictory speech. Yeah. Now, she has a right to, as a student, so a student-initiated, student-led, and right. the school did not pick her to offer a prayer. She was selected by her grades and all. So that is absolutely protected speech by the Supreme Court under the Constitution. And that is right. Student-led, student-initiated, the school has no uh, imprimatur uh, on that speech, then, yeah, that is fine. Now, this came down to the last minute. I mean, most of us never get to give a speech like that. We don't get to stand up. Most of us didn't have the grades to give a speech like that. But, but the students who do, this is one day out of a lifetime, and this came down to the wire. It was last Friday afternoon when finally an appeals court stepped in and said, hang on, buddy. Right. Yeah, the Fifth Circuit got involved almost immediately and said, no, we're nullifying the district court's order. There was no grounds for that uh, in, in the record that we can see, and that allowed, essentially, our valedictorian to give her speech and to give her prayer. Now, tell me about the importance of her taking a stand for prayer. What, what's the larger issue here? Well, the larger issue is simply having the courage to get up and defend your religious liberty rights, whether you have to go to a, a federal courthouse or not. I was really impressed with her. All right, we do want to let you hear the prayer that was given. This is Angela Hildenbrand at the high school down in Texas. Lord, I thank you so much for the blessing of this day, and I just thank you for the amazing group of people that you've surrounded me with. God, I thank you for the support of our whole entire community through this case hearing, and also for Aaron and all the people at the Liberty Institute and my parents who've helped get me through the last couple of days. Um, Lord, I just thank you so much for your presence in our lives through these 18 years. And I just praise you for your incredible faithfulness through all adversity and all joy. God, I thank you for the men and women who've given their lives, helping to give us and protect the freedoms that we have today. And I ask that you please keep your hand of guidance on all of them, past, present, and future military. God, I thank you just so much for the freedom to be here today. And most of all, I thank you for loving us first. God, I ask that you please um, keep each of us safe and well as we all go our separate ways. And I can't wait to see where you'll be leading each of us. I ask that you ask us all to remember where we come from and to know where we stand. God, I thank you for the gift of your son and for the forgiveness that surpasses all understanding. And most of all, I thank you for your great love for us and for our great nation where we are free. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, if the future of our country is in the hands of young people like that, I think we're going to be okay. Bruce, share with me for any parents or students who might be wondering, what are the edges of that protected area for student speech when it comes to prayer and Bible study and all those things in, within a public school context? Yeah, it's very simple. If the prayer is student-led, student-initiated, and the school is not involved, it's constitutional, it's perfectly fine and protected speech under the First Amendment. All right, so the school was right to let her have the prayer and the judge was absolutely wrong. That's correct, Stuart. All right, now let's talk about the not so pleasant outcome for the Bronx Household of Faith. That's a congregation that meets on the weekends in an empty school building uh, when there are no students there. They rent the building from the New York City uh, school district mm -hmm. and, and they were told, no, you can't do that. And this thing has been going back and forth for about a decade and a half now. Right. We got some unfortunate news this past Last week, tell us about it. Yes, uh, originally, you know, the, the school ha had denied uh, this church the right to meet on uh, Sunday because they said we're prohibiting religious 
worship services. Now, anyone who knows anything about the First Amendment and what the Supreme Court has said on that knows that it's perfectly fine for a church to rent um, a facility to pray, to preach, to sing. But somehow the Second Circuit last week got it all messed up by saying when you combine all of those into one activity called a religious worship service, that somehow is not protected by the First Amendment, even though it's comprised of all of these protected individual elements. It's nonsense. It's almost impossible to explain to the public. It's the kind of decision that gives courts and lawyers a bad name. And essentially, he said, because of that, then, the school district was right to say, no, we're not going to rent to you anymore, even though they rent to other community groups. Well, that's right. And it's obviously discriminatory when you look at it. And if that becomes the law of the land, then there are going to be thousands of churches um, across the nation that uh, literally could be out of out of luck next Sunday. Yeah. Now, now the, the interesting thing about this is, I mean, if they just had a religious discussion where they sat down and talked about religion, mm -hmm. or if they just had a, a, a music service that was just music, I mean, where we have a band and an audience, those are apparently would be okay, but if you start mixing it together where you're actually asking people to worship God, then you're beyond the pale. Yeah, it makes no sense. Uh, the court even admitted, uh, it wrote it out. It said if you sing to God, if you pray to God, and if you preach about God, those are all protected activities and a, and a school cannot deny you a rented facility because of that. But because you're calling it a religious worship service, that somehow transforms all of these protected activities into an unprotected activity. Yeah, I was going to say that the churches have been allowed to meet uh, while the courts are sorting this out. The courts have said you can continue to rent the buildings and the school can't kick you out. But it, now it's a little bit in jeopardy until we hear what the next step is. That's right. In these cases, typically, even though the court has held for the school district here, they typically will uh, prevent their own order from going into effect until all appeals have been exhausted. So hopefully this, this church will still have a facility next Sunday. Now what's the significance of this for churches in the larger picture? What, especially this idea of worship being not protected under the First Amendment. Well, we've seen a general hostility uh, from school districts across the country. We've seen numerous cases brought, uh, whether it's involving school clubs or churches trying to rent facilities. There is a hostility out there and a, and a complete misunderstanding of the First Amendment. And if this somehow becomes um, Supreme Court law, if once they hear it, there are going to be a whole lot of churches who are, are going to be out of, uh, out of luck uh, for their worship services come you know, a future Sunday, one of these days. All right, and this will be appealed. It's just a matter of what happens next, right? That's correct. I would expect it either to go to the en banc or the full Second Circuit uh, uh, panel or directly to the Supreme Court. All right, well, thank you, Bruce. Thanks for your insights and keeping track of all this and helping the rest of us understand it because it is complicated stuff. And thank you for watching. We always appreciate hearing from you. You may write to us at mail at citizenlink.com. We encourage you to say a prayer for Angela Hildenbrand down in Texas, who was courageous enough to offer a prayer during her valedictory speech. Very proud of her for doing that. Uh, pray for all of those students who are standing up for prayer during this graduation season. And remember to say a prayer for the, the congregation known as the Bronx Household of Faith and all the other churches that are meeting in New York City's public school buildings while they're empty, they need to know the nation is with them. And remember, stand tall and be heard.